Hey there, my name is Chris and I bought these quick jacks about six months ago. And if you've been following the Beamer Barn channel, you've probably seen us put these to good use on a few different cars, as well as behind the scenes, I've also helped my friends fix their cars using these quick jacks. So I'd say I've put them to the use almost daily. Now I've also had a lot of people ask me questions about these quick jacks and if I like them or not. So in today's video, hopefully I can help you decide if you should buy yourself a set of quick jacks or not. I'm gonna be going through what these quick jacks are, just kind of a basics. And then we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons and some things that I would change about the design. And then at the very end of the video, I'll list some of the reasons you guys should or shouldn't buy these quick jacks. So first things first, let's go ahead and put these things on the ground and then let's see how they work. So in front of me here, I have everything that you get in the box from the original Quick Jacks kit, besides any of the extra packaging, obviously. So you get four of the three inch jack pad adapters. You get four of the two inch jack pad adapters. You get your connecting hoses. Now these don't come pre-assembled, so you do have to assemble them yourself. And then you have your actual Quick Jacks bases, and then you have the hydraulic unit, which you can see over there. The way that the quick jack works is by pumping hydraulic fluid, or in this case, the automatic transmission fluid that they don't include in the kit. You have to get that yourself from the auto store. It pumps that fluid through the lines to the hydraulic cylinders that are in these platforms. And then these platforms raise up on their own and create about 22 inches of clearance. So now I'm gonna hook up these hoses so we can see how it works. Now these hoses use quick disconnects and they come with these nice silicone covers which keep any dust or dirt from getting in them. I like to take the covers off and then wipe everything off. And then I saw this really cool trick online on the, actually another YouTube video where in order to get this connector in as easy as possible, if you press the down button, it actually releases the pressure in the cylinder so that these fittings go on really easily. And then as you see these things, they have a little locking mechanism here. I like to twist it to the side a little bit and that ensures that you cannot accidentally pull this fitting off. Now the Quick Jacks user manual says that you should not operate the Quick Jacks without a load on them besides the initial bleed procedure that you have to do when you receive these. But for today's video purposes, I went ahead and lifted these up so I can show you exactly how the mechanism works. So the construction of this thing is pretty sturdy. This particular model is the 5000 SLX. They have a couple of different models in different sizes, but this is the most standard one, most cost effective, and I think the retail on it is somewhere around $14.99, but you can find them for a good deal at surplus stores or Costco like that for like $11.99. And then when they're on sale, like when I got these ones, they were on sale from the Black Friday sale and I got these right around $1,000. So if I can recommend you a time of the year to buy these, they'll go on sale a couple of times of the year at Costco, but then around Thanksgiving, Black Friday area, they'll definitely drop down to around $1,000 like almost every year. Now before you buy your quick jack, so you probably wanna make sure that you're getting the right size besides just the weight capacity for the vehicles you're gonna be working on. So these things have a minimum jack point spread and a maximum jack point spread. Now besides the jack point spread from left to right, these are obviously infinitely adjustable in either direction, but the distance from each end, the front to the rear is limited. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the correct size quick jack for the application. And if you're gonna be using a lot of longer cars, you probably wanna get their longer model quick jack or for the 5000 SLX model, you can actually get adapter bases that make this a bit longer. So you get an extra three inches of clearance on either side to really get the most amount of length. But keep in mind that when you do that, you're also gonna be adding a little bit of height. So if you want that extra length, but you wanna still keep it low profile, go ahead and grab these slightly longer quick jacks. Otherwise, these will be pretty good and they'll work on most vehicles. So the maximum jack point spread on this is gonna be about 60 inches from tip to tip. And the minimum spread is gonna be about 31 inches. So as long as your jack points are between those two distances, you should be good to use the 5000 SLX model. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that these jack pad adapters have their own height associated with them. So while the minimum clearance for this thing is about three and a half or four inches, when you add a jack pad adapter, it adds about half of an inch or three quarters of an inch to that height. And then with the larger jack pad adapter, it's about an inch and a half on top of that. So keep in mind that you might have to raise your car up with a floor jack in order to get it off the ground enough so you can slide these jacks under the car and then get it in the air from there. 
Oh, and one last feature of these hydraulic cylinders that I wanted to mention that's pretty important is that they have a gas air chamber on the side of them. Now this is to press the hydraulic cylinder back to its resting position when there's not much of a load on it. And it's important that you check the pressures when you get these out of the box. That way, both of these hydraulic cylinders go down at the same speed because what you don't want is you don't want your car to come down at different speeds and fall off one side or go up at different speeds. So check your air pressures in those gas cylinders. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower these down and put them under my car. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how much time it takes from having these pieces fully disassembled to having my car all the way lifted up in the air. So cue the time lapse. So the car is lifted up now and you can see just about how much time that took us. Now at full lift, it's about 18 inches of lift height overall, but when you add the combined jack adapters, you do get some extra height out of it. So it comes out to be about 21 or 22 inches off the ground that you can get a car. Now, although that number doesn't sound like a lot, it is plenty of height to get under the car, do a ton of different service work, and you can even be comfy under there with a couple of people because the height is incredible. Now, also, it lets you use a creeper with plenty of height to spare, so you can get on your back, be comfy, and you won't have to be rolling around on the ground getting all dirty. Now, although the jack point spread is really important and something you should take into consideration before you buy your quick jacks, on the E39, the jack point spread is actually too far apart from the front to the back in order to use the quick jack properly. Now, that isn't technically a problem because on the BMW chassis, most of them have a significant pinch weld or a structural beam that goes down the side of the car. So what I've been able to do is use the soft rubber jack pads on those frame rails that are on the sides of the car. So the front is going by the original jack point, but on the rear, we're just using part of a pinch weld, something that we know is strong and with a big old jack pad, it's not gonna punch through the chassis of the car. But be careful if you're doing this yourself because you don't wanna mess up and put the jack pad adapter somewhere that's too soft and you might end up bending some metal. So now I've shown you what the quick jacks are and how they work, we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So one good thing about this system is that it's pretty fast and efficient at getting a car up and down. Now something to take into account is how long it takes for you to get the quick jacks under the car in the first place, especially depending on where you're gonna store them. So if you're gonna put them on the wall or if you're just gonna put them on the ground in your garage like I like to do, it can really affect how much time it's gonna take you to get the quick jacks under the car. Like I said, I like to keep the quick jacks on the ground next to my car with out the hoses connected so I can easily pull in and out forwards, but when I need to service my car, I'll simply connect the hoses, put the jacks one foot in so that they're under my car, and then I can lift my car up safely. Now, when you compare the amount of time to just jacking up a car on jack stands and using a floor jack, it might almost be co comparable when you compare like the setup time and the hoses and everything else like that. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, another great thing about the quick jacks is that they have a really versatile lift point spread. So from front to rear, you've got to have something between 60 to 31 inches. And if you have something longer, you can get the longer quick jack. It's just going to limit how much of a smaller car you can use in the end. But if you're just going to be doing longer cars, and let's say you're not going to be doing any compact cars, then you really don't need a smaller quick jack and you could probably get that bigger one. If you're going to want to do a lot of versatile work and you're not sure what the jack point spread is, I would probably get the standard one because it's a pretty good size and then if you need to upgrade later you can get that adapter bracket that'll make the whole thing larger now besides the lift point spread you also have to think about the minimum clearance so when this thing is fully compressed are you going to be able to slide it under your car and then being able to slide it under your car are you also going to be able to put a jack pad adapter under there too so your car is going to be safe to lift because if it's not tall enough, you're probably still going to need a floor jack to at least lift up the front of the car, get the weight off of it, put the jacks under, and then from there you should be able to get your car up safely. So definitely read up on the measurements of the model that you're looking at and make sure it's gonna work for your car. Now, another great thing is that these frames here seem to be very quality construction. The welds seem to be top notch. The whole thing is powder coated, so it's not gonna deteriorate or rust over time. Besides the bases of it, which are gonna be grinding on the concrete a little bit as you put a car up and down, but that's not really avoidable. 
Now my one complaint about the quick jacks is a safety feature that I wish that they would have added in or at least some sort of redundancy because if you really understand how the quick jacks work, you see that there might be one flaw in it that could almost cause an accident. So in my opinion, the flaw here is that the arm doesn't have any lock. So theoretically, if you were to grab a heavy enough sledgehammer, you could probably knock this lock off the bracket and this whole side of the, the quick jack would come down. Now, how could you avoid this issue? Well, if you had like a, a bracket, like let's say a quick release pin and it went through the arm and also the quick jack, then it would definitely keep this from moving and it would have it locked in that position. I think that would be a really clever safety feature for quick jack to employ on future models. But otherwise, I think it's pretty safe. In theory, the more pressure that you have on the quick jack, the less likely that this arm is to pop out on its own but it's just something that lives in the back of my mind. So to make the quick jack even that much safer, what I've been doing when I'm under the car for a longer period of time is I'll take my jack stands and I'll put them on either end so that should this thing start to fall, at least the chassis of the car will have to fall on jack stands and that should at least help it from going all the way down. So I hope you enjoy this video and maybe it helped you decide whether you should or should not pick up the quick jacks. I am very happy with my purchase. These things make a great portable solution. So if I needed to take these to my next home, put it in a different shop, whatever the case may be, these things can go on the move and you can use them wherever you can get an extension cord to. So they're really handy. I've been using mine every day. I haven't found a lot of issues with them. The cylinders don't seem to be leaking. Nothing needs to be serviced right now. So I'd say that these things are pretty reliable and cost effective too, because a thousand dollars is a pretty cheap lift when you compare it to some of the other lifts on the market obviously this thing doesn't give you all the clearance of a full-size lift or some of the other small portable lifts that are available but the price point is pretty budget friendly and the system helps you tremendously in the garage so I hope you enjoyed today's video if you have any questions about the quick jack system leave them down in the comments below give a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see BMW content because we always put these quick jacks to the use and they have been through a lot and they're gonna see a lot more. So I hope everyone has an awesome day and we will see you in the next video.